Hi, everyone. It's Paul here. Welcome to another Conversations in Newmarket with Neighbor, Snap's new brand that's just around the corner. But I want to welcome our guest today. I have Tracy from the Newmarket Chamber. She's the CEO and fully running all the brains over there and running all the great programs that the Chamber has been providing, has always been providing, but has been providing certainly during COVID and the pandemic and leading the way and all sorts of cool, innovative things. And MP Tony Van Bynen, you just call him Tony here because, you know, we're buddies from a long way back. And Tony, we're going to be talking a lot around the budget today. I know the Liberal government came out with a great new budget and it's going to impact a lot of people, both business people and Tracy's probably got a bunch of questions around that. And I probably too as a business guy as well. But things that impact our citizens like child care benefits and all that, I don't want to get into too much of the detail myself, and I'm going to maybe throw it over to you, Tony, just to welcome to the show, you guys, first of all. Well, thanks very much, uh, Paul. It's great to be back. Our first show was a, was a lot of fun. This one is uh, has a bit more of a serious tone to it. Um, I think we've all had our share of the of the COVID, COVID-itis, I, I, I refer to it as. It's been a long, tough haul, but I the, uh, the good news is, is I, I think uh, relief is around the corner. Um, when we're looking at this budget, um, this budget is about finishing the fight with COVID first and foremost. Um, by the end of June, we should have somewhere in the range of 50,000 uh, vaccines uh, in Canada and roughly 100,000 by the end of September. Uh, and that would be more than adequate to uh, accomplish what we call herd immunity. And uh, the best definition I've received yet is So that, just to uh, clarify that, to step on it, when you say 50 and 100,000, you mean like don't you mean hundred thousand, like fifty thousand? Sorry, no, uh, a million, million. Yeah, okay. Sorry, good catch, yeah. Paul. Good okay, catch. I was like fifty thousand. I know fifty thousand people yeah. myself, Let's... but okay. So <laughs> yeah, I just want to be cool. Let's with the start a game. There, so big herd yeah, immunity yeah, yeah. push. Sorry, Tony, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's good. So I'm, I'm glad that we'll catch that. So uh, let's say, um, so the budget, the budget is about finishing the fight against COVID-19, and we're turning the corner with as more vaccines are arriving. We should have 50 million by the end of June, and 100 million by the end of September, uh, and that's what we need to get close to accomplishing what we call herd immunity. Uh, and the best definition that I've uh, seen on herd immunity is that 75% of your population will have had one vaccine and 25% will have had two. But until then, it's really important to remember, wash your hands, wear your masks, stay at home, uh, and if you must go out to keep your distance. Uh, the second part of the budget, I think, talks around how uh, we're going to deal with this recession. This recession has been the deepest and the steepest and the fastest contraction since the Great Depression, and it has disproportionately affected a lot of low-wage workers, young people, women, and racialized Canadians, and many businesses, especially small businesses, are fighting to survive. So just to summarize, uh, this budget uh, is a historic investment to put people first, to create jobs, grow the middle class, to set business back on track for long-term sustainable growth and to ensure that Canada's future will be healthier, more equitable, greener, and more prosperous and sustainable. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of like a brief summary, Paul, if that works. Yeah, that's great. And I think there's lots of things I want to dig in deeper. There's things like, you know, green, there's a lot of green. I see the language green in the budget and how beyond sort of just tomorrow, on what that looks like for the future. I think both as in a myopic sense has snapped and now neighbor, I'm interested in like, what's in it for me a little bit as a business person mm -hmm. and sure. how that impacts mm -hmm. my business. I'm sure Tracy has a thousand or so members who are also kind of thinking about from that perspective, but I might throw it over to Tracy and um, just to talk through maybe or ask a few questions around sort of business or whatever you're thinking there, Trace? Well, I think uh, it's important, I mean, that we recognize that there were many positives for businesses in terms of resilience and recovery. And and um, a lot of the pieces that were put together by the Canadian Chamber um, in our pre-budget submission, the Roadmap to Recovery, um, the government took a lot of that um, to heart and, and we've seen a lot of those pieces come in the budget. So um, thank you for that. 
Um, and I think that you're, you know, we were really happy to see that the long-term recovery is being thought through and, and how the private sector can help us return quickly to, um, to a more resilient and, and stronger future. So I think that, that a lot of that was looked at at the budget. So we're happy to see um, a lot of those pieces. And I know we'll, we'll have conversations as we go on, but um, certainly the supports for businesses and the extension of programs like SUS and, or sorry, CWS, if you want to look at it that way, and, and some of the mm -hmm. other programs um, was very definitely um, beneficial for businesses. And I think it's really important that they get this support um, especially those hardest hit sectors and small businesses who are really feeling it, um, that they have that support while they still need it. Um, and that, you know, that how, balance. If I can interject, how long is um, that wage subsidy going on for? Sue's being the wage subsidy. How long are they projecting that, Tony, to, you're saying, get us across the finish line? Or when, yep. like, I know well, it's it probably a moving thing a little bit, but when are they anticipating that going until? Yeah. Well, if there's anything we've learned, Paul, is that this virus is uh, so unpredictable. And so we've, every time we think that we're we're turning the corner, we seem to run into a uh, into a new challenge or a new barrier. Um, at this point, um, you know, the target uh, for everyone who wants to have a vaccine is for September. And so the 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 outline for the support programs goes to September. Okay. Uh, and uh, as the economy starts to pick up, they're starting to uh, wind down uh, some of the some of the programs gradually starting, I believe, in July. But uh, what's really important is the fact that if we get another curve, the budget does provide for extending to November if necessary. And of course, through it, all of this, um, uh, as we had new curves thrown at us uh, through throughout the last year, uh, I think you've seen that the government has responded as, as was appropriate and, and as was needed when we go through. Yeah, I mean, if I could have a personal observation, I think as a business guy, I think the government and the Ontario government as well, I think all levels of government have been super responsive on kind of the needs. We're not, I don't feel as a business person, I've been left hanging out in a branch somewhere and with no kind of support. And I know, you know, both governments and organizations like Tracy's have done a tremendous amount of work to kind of make sure that we're all doing the best of our ability to our ability to sort of get to the other side and I, I think uh, we all feel that we're kind of close like not maybe not super close mm -hmm. but at least we're on the path to getting to the other side and i for one on a personal level am looking forward to that because every email i get right now that says do you want to buy tickets i'm like yes click yes and so <laughs> <laughs> i'm committing to a lot of things that are happening in like november and january so Please don't let me down, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we said we'd have your back, Paul. We said we'd have uh, businesses back. And I, I think the performance this far, without being too partisan, uh, I think has been good. Um, and, you know, with a minority government, it's important that the government works together across all parties. Uh, and, and equally important is to work effectively with both the provincial and the regional and the municipal governments. There's, there's been some pretty significant investments that have, uh, that have flowed through. Um, you know, one example is the uh, Canada Summer Jobs Program, which should be launching very shortly. And we're investing $2.4 million in 650 jobs just in Newmarket Aurora alone through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. Uh, and so that's a great partnership between businesses and, and the government. And it's a huge investment in students who, A, need the tuition to get back to school, but, but B, it's a great learning opportunity for them. So I'm really excited about those kinds of programs where we, where we can work together. Yeah, those are great things. And how would people become like students and businesses alike? How do they become more aware of those kind of programs, Tony? Is it go to the, a certain website we, or... Come to your house well, uh, and there... knock on your door. What do you want people to do here? <laughs> well, um, what we do is we, we actually circulate to most businesses and we, through our social media, in November is applications. And then from November until, oh gosh, I think we just announced it at the beginning of March, April. Uh, so so there's, a, there's a, a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of work to get it all aligned and uh, making sure that we get the opportunity to make sure that the programs fit with the priorities for our community. Sure. Uh, and and this year and last year, it's been particularly challenging because we generally, you know, we uh, we go into a partnership with the municipalities for camp counselors. Well, last year it was virtually impossible to have a camp. So so we had to regroup. So um, I think we could do a better job in letting people know in November saying, have, have you got something in mind? Because I think organizations like yourself, Paul and, and Tracy, I, I think you've had an, uh, a summer jobs program going. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'd like more people to know about it. And I, I need to find a better way to communicate that. Now, last yeah, year we, we were very, very oversubscribed. Yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. Uh, we promote that too, right, out to um, the businesses in town. So we make sure that they're aware of that program. Mm -hmm. It's it's really beneficial. And yes, we've we've actually um, our students confirmed this year we're probably the lar um, the longest term we've had, which is really beneficial to employers um, to be able to have them a little longer because you're onboarding them, and that takes some time. So to have them on not only onboarded but then um you know have some time to actually give back and and uh, make a difference in in your um particular organization is important so uh, we we do like that program and and support it um, as well as any of them that are beneficial to employers to be honest <laughs> yeah i mean those are great things i love programs like that i know there's been some sectors tony that have been like devastated i think um you know i've got lots of friends coincidentally in the bar type business and restaurant business that's just a coincidence that they're in that business i'm joking there it's not like that i <laughs> don't frequent them like all the time but um mm -hmm. lots of certainly that entertainment kind of sector tourism entertainment like those some of those things like um have been devastated i know i was talking to nad from the holiday inn i had a meeting with him mm -hmm. a couple of days ago and he basically said we laid off all our housekeeping staff. They've been laid off for a year and a bit. Um, we only have 10 rooms out of 100 rooms that we can even rent out. Some, you know, they're being used as a blood donor clinic. So I got to think things around tourism, cultural events, festivals, which is kind of more the snap neighbor sort of ballywick. Those kind of industries mm -hmm. have been sort of, super devastated i know you guys have come out yeah. with a program around that too can you tell us a little bit about that or yeah you know uh, b before i forget though paul um if there's any students or youth that are watching between the ages of 15 and 30 um the they're taking applications right now through jobbank.gc.ca forward slash youth so this is a, a a great opportunity for us to let people know that there's uh, uh, th this is how the students themselves can get involved i share your concern about the tourism industry uh, i've heard a lot from uh, uh, the the hotels and although we don't have a massive uh, uh, tourism attraction let's remember that a lot of a lot of uh, the the tourism in uh, in uh, Newmarket and Aurora is around hockey ball ball uh, uh, baseball uh, games and and there's there's all sorts of things that we've missed last year and I think it's going to take a little while longer for us to recover the government has set 500 million aside uh, to to invest in the tourism industry uh, and and hopefully that will provide some relief through the regional um, the regional development, uh, uh, I think it's RDC. Okay. Regional development. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, those things RDC, are all cool right? because I think, yeah. you know, once we're ready to bring it back to life, we need to bring it back to life. I know as a yeah. neighbor or SNAP, we're working on some programs like that to bring communities back to life, whether um, we're working on one specifically with Market Brewing, sort of a comedy and music thing that we're launching whenever we're allowed to kind of launch that. We're working in a cross Canada scenario where we're bringing music and, and food to various communities, both on a grassroots and a national campaign. Um, we were involved with some tourism aspects like hoteliers, I mentioned that, for example. So all those things, like it's amazing when you sort of peel back some of the layers, how you see how COVID has deeply impacted people. To be for that meeting with Nat, I never really thought about housekeeping staff in a in a hotel, how they would be just completely devastated by being laid off for a year and a quarter. And 
And so we even started talking about how we could do things like have a party, if you will, in the parking lot of the Holiday Inn for all those kind of people saying, hey, we're going to have a, when we're allowed to, let's have a big bash next spring or whenever it is, fundraise, let's just bring life back to people. So I'm really encouraged by the budget and those kind of things that, um, yeah. that it's bringing. And the things that I'm hearing as well, Paul, is, is that uh, uh, people haven't been going anywhere doing anything. And so when it's time and, and we're able to go out and do things, I think we can we can see the economy come roaring back, perhaps a lot faster than we might anticipate. Uh, and that would be great news. Uh, but but uh, we need to be ready for something along that line. I sure hope it does. Uh, we've got a lot of catch up to do. Yeah, we're going to take a break in a second. But I want to leave you with this just before the break, because we, ha we have to shoot to commercial messages. Somebody's got to pay for this somehow, Tony. And I know it's not in the budget to give neighbor podcast money. So we have to layer in a couple of ads. But I've been saying this to people that, I, you know, I think conservatively we could say, or we hope, that New Year's Eve will be open. And so do you think there'll be anybody? I'll let you pause on this while we go to break. Do you think there'll be anybody that says this year if it's open? Yeah, I'm going to stay in this year for New Year's. I don't think so. Probably, probably as many people as I have, have hairs on my head. Yeah, me too, Tony. So we'll take a break now. We'll come back in a minute. All right. Hi, I'm Tina Finelli. I'm one of the hosts for See What She Could Do Conversations, the podcast. I'd love for you to come explore stories, adventures, and resources that inspire and keep you moving. We invite you to join us as we uncover stories of hope, resilience, community, and creative thinking from active women and sports lovers just like you. We celebrate the challenges and successes that spark growth, and we talk to supporters who encourage us to do all that we love most. So come check us out, See What She Can Do Conversations, the podcast at seewhatshecando.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back. So to answer that kind of question, what do you think, Tracy? Do you think Anyone's going to stay in for New Year's this year? Uh, I guess it depends really how, when we're coming out of this. I mean, I won't be staying home, but I think there'll still be people that are being cautious at coming out of this. And so we have, we have a need to kind of still get those messages out for people to feel comfortable and safe. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we money. violate anything like masks or anything like that. I'm just saying if the government says, hey, we're good. Rates are basically zero. Things are rocking. I know for me, I'm going to buy tickets for every event happening on New Year's. And I'm just going to bounce around saying, like, I've had enough of COVID and I'm not irresponsible. I'm as responsible as the next person. But I am fully just going insane. And so I need, I need people. You guys both know me. I need to be around people and sharing laughs and doing kind of things like that. So um, anyway, I just wanted to give a little bit. Yeah, I've been spending my Fridays just with just the same people boring me. <laughs> I'm just joking because well, Tracy and I know... meet up every once in a while, have Friday night wine together. So that was me teasing her right there. <laughs> By Zoom, just so we can be clear. Yeah. Yeah, but it, but uh, you know that's a, a very significant concern of mine is the stress that we're seeing as a result of COVID nineteen, uh, and uh, you know when when we're looking at I'm, and I'm referring it to now to the next tsunami. It's uh, it's uh, it's been really really uh, a significant issue. There's 190 million dollars now in this budget that's being directed towards making uh, more availability through mental health. And that's including an additional $62 million in the, uh, the uh, helpline in the, that, that we've got. So as well as, as the kids helpline. But the good news too, though, Paul, is that uh, the budget has $200 million for major festivals and $200 million for local community festivals. Uh, so, you know, maybe we might see a few music in the park uh, if we can socially distance and, and make that work. So, but it's, it's that kind of socializing, I think, that, uh, that people are genuinely missing. And it's a concern of mine, for sure. I think you even saw it, um, a COVID version of it this weekend. I saw your post on social media, Instagram or Facebook at, around the farmer's market 
So I was out of town, so I couldn't really attend it. But I saw, mm -hmm. even though it had fencing and even though it was like not exactly old school farmer's market, I think there was probably still a great sense of people. Hey, I'm back here. I'm waving at people, even though it's sort of kind of a COVID mm -hmm. version of it all. Um, what did you feel from that, Tony? Like you were there, I know. I saw your post. Yeah. I was uh, I was very happy to see that people were, were respecting their distances and wearing their masks, uh, and um, and that the the farmers market as an organization controlled the you know the the people coming in and leaving, so that it was very uh, very uh, very well managed. Uh, and even when you had a look at the lineups, Paul, everybody was keeping their distance. So so I think the message about keeping your distance is there, uh, and uh, and no, nobody wants to to get the bug. It's this is a very vicious virus and so yeah. people are being extremely cautious uh and it's a balance it's a balance and outdoor is is uh thank goodness we're not in the middle of winter <clears throat> yep that's on so many levels not just COVID. i can't mm -hmm. take winter anymore so um but i think there's those little things coming back to life even if it's organized and certainly being re real respectful are necessary on the mental health you talked about the mental health initiatives in um, the budget. We do a lot of work with CMHA and, you know, I think those organizations have never been put to the test like they have, like all lots of industries, but those guys for sure have really been put to the test. Like, mm -hmm. you know, their phones are ringing off the hook. There's lots of people in crisis having a hard time getting over it. And I'm, when I'm joking about it, I don't mean any disrespect to them. Mm. I'm only kind of joking about yeah. myself yeah. and Tracy. I'll joke about Tracy and Dick. But, <laughs> well, um, the, the, the Wellness Together line itself has had over 1.2 million calls. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, which is... And, a, what you know, would they reflection. normally have in a normal, so to speak, year? Well, Wellness Together was just launched oh, okay. uh, as, a re, as, a, as a way of reacting to the pandemic. Still, 1. There's a kid's help line. Yeah. Yeah, 1.2 million. Yeah, and and uh, that's in addition to the kids' helpline as well. So yeah, so and it's anyway. had over 3.6 million sessions. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a lot. So, so lots of yeah. people coming back again, getting more help. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of things in the budget. Where would you suggest people really get informed about the budget, Tony? I know there's certainly going to government websites, so we're going to post all that stuff after okay. the. After the podcast, we'll have links to finding out more about the budget. And you can maybe tell our listeners now, some people will be watching us because there were three handsome people right here. But a lot of people <laughs> will just be listening yeah. while they drive in their car. Not that we want them to drop their steering wheel and write this down. But, you know, some is it good websites and things to go to to find yeah, out about all the, this? There's a, a very good way, website, uh, Paul, and that is budget2021. Two, two uh, the government of Canada. And if you, if when you first land on the page, make sure that you roll down and then you can, there's a little slot in there where you can do keywords. And so if you're interested in say tax relief or interest relief or anything like that, do the search and it'll take you right to the sections and it'll take you through each of the chapters. Uh, I think 741 pages. So if you have insomnia, this might be part of the cure as well, but uh, it's uh, it's it's very it's it's very informative and straightforward language. Uh, even even I was was able to understand it as we were going forward with that. But in terms of what's really important, is it's laying the foundation and the framework, Paul, of a stronger, more sustainable, more greener, more compassionate. Uh, future. And when I say compassionate, I mean compassionate towards one another in terms of equity uh, and anti-racism, towards supporting people who uh, who are disadvantaged, uh, and also compassion towards our environment. Uh, because if we don't take care of Mother Earth, she won't take care of us. Yeah, that's true. Like, I mean, there's all these things. And I think, I do think the good things that have come out of the pandemic are those things you're suggesting. We, I think we all are more mm -hmm. compassionate. I know I've talked about this on another podcast where I do think, even from my perspective, I have more understanding of lineups at grocery stores where I used to, you know, go off the chart and get super stressed out about why am I in this line and all that kind of thing. I think we're more respectful, less road rage, all those kind of things. I think we do look mm -hmm. out for each other more. I know because I'm more attuned to 
sort of government programs. I know I've recommended to my friends at IE Market Brewing saying, hey, there's a government program here that I think is good or a government program there. I mean, Tracy's in that business of going, hey, take advantage of this and take advantage of that. And there's youth programs Mm -hmm. and all that. So I think we're doing a tremendous job as citizens in our community of kind of keeping everyone connected and, you know, wired to other things. Just so you know, Tony, though, I need high level. I'm not reading unless Tracy's reading to me 740 or whatever pages. So that was today was about getting kind of a grassroots understanding. I think you can go to budget.gc.ca as well and get an understanding of what's going on. Um, Do you have any parting thoughts here, Tracy, before we kind of sign off and all of us get back to our merry ways? Uh, So just from a business standpoint, if you do want kind of a breakdown and and, um, easier way to understand some of the things coming out in the budget, the Canadian Chamber has done like sort of of a short form um, look at it and, and given some thoughts on it as well. So that can be found at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce site. So I, I'd recommend that as well. And if, if there's any questions on the business side, you can certainly come to the chamber. But, um, you know, uh, we often have um, MP Van Bynen on calls and he's been very open and forthcoming and available to our businesses. So um, join us on one of those calls and, and he pops into some of our regular stuff too. So that's great. Yeah, that is great. And I know, Tracy, to give you guys props, I know you've been doing a lot of webinars and things and when budgets come out and new programs come out and they're really good, um, whether it's provincial or even municipal, things are coming out and your organization has been tremendous on keeping us all kind of informed on what's happening and what's going on. And we are living in this kind of ebb and flow dynamic sort of situation. Hopefully we're going, but sometimes we're coming and going. So um, anyway, I want to wish you guys good health and uh, we'll do another conversation and I can't wait to hug you guys somewhere, right? And I don't want it to be New Year's. I'm hoping for September or something like that. <laughs> so uh, uh, thanks again for joining us on the show. Um, we're going to have all, for everyone's benefit, we're going to have all the information so you can connect with Tracy or Tony on our website after the show. And thanks again, you guys, for joining me on the show. I appreciate being invited, Paul. Thank okay. you. Okay. And we'll see you soon. Take care. See ya. Thanks.